Now, the great thing about the Parse system is that you can use it in all the folders that you use in your computer. That means Notion, that means your folder, that means your Google Drive, anything that you use. It's literally one system to rule them all. And that makes finding files so much easier because you're using the same taxonomy on all your apps. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So as a creator, I deal with so many files in my computer. And one of the most frustrating feelings is spending so much time looking for a specific file within my computer, only to later not be able to find it or throwing a half an hour out the window just because I can't find the file I'm looking for. So I've tried so many organizational systems for folders over the years, but then it just became a big mess of folders within folders within folders. And then a few months ago, I stumbled upon the Paris system, an idea developed by Tiago Forte from Forte Labs. I implemented it right away. And from that day onwards, I never had the problem of trying to find the file ever again. First, I'm gonna start by talking about what the Paris system is, what each of those letters stands for. Then we're gonna move into the difference between projects and areas. Then I'm gonna show you my folder organization. And finally, I'm gonna talk about the app that I use to put file finding on steroids. All right, let's get started. Hello, fellow creative. Welcome back to the channel, the best spot on YouTube for creative productivity and growth. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to release a lot of videos showing my creative workflow, how I plan my YouTube videos, the scripting, the editing part, and also how I work in my blog. So to make sure that you don't miss those videos and take your creative life to the next level, please subscribe to this channel, the best spot for creators. Now let's go with this video and let's start by defining what the Paris system is. Okay, so Paris stands for projects, areas, resources, and archive. Now let's start by defining what each one of those actually means. So the first one projects are a series the tasks that you're going to complete that are linked to an outcome, to a goal. And projects also have a deadline. So for me, a project could be creating a new course. There's a series of tasks that I need to do. First, I need to come up with the ideas, then I need to script, maybe record the videos, then edit, publish, do the copywriting, and then create the sales page for the course to be live. And once I've completed all those tasks, my course is ready to go live. And so that's the end of my project. Now, areas are a little bit different. Areas have a standard to be maintained over time. So for example, for me, this YouTube channel is an area of my life. There's a standard that I need to maintain over time. I want to publish three new episodes per week. And so that's my standard to be maintained over time. In my personal life, I also have so many other areas. For example, health, hobbies, personal development, productivity, taking care of my apartment, and so many other things. So as a creator, this could mean so many things. Basically, an area is just a very long project that has no deadline. Then we have resources, which are topics that you have ongoing interest. So for example, as a creator, any kind of skill that you're trying to build up over time, such as note-taking, online marketing, SEO, that falls into the resources areas. In our personal lives, those those are the habits that you're trying to develop. And then finally, we have the fourth category, which is the archive. And the archive literally is anything that is inactive from the other three parts. So anything that if you used before in your projects, areas, and resources that you are not using anymore, it goes into the archive. It's basically the backlog of everything that you have done in your life. And so the idea here is that we spend our days completing tasks that fall into projects that fall into areas. So that's the entire premise of the Pirate system. Let's now talk a little bit more about the difference between projects and areas. So as I said before, projects have a defining deadline. At a certain point in time in the future, I'm able to complete a project and that falls now under the areas if there is a standard to be maintained or it goes into the archive. So for example, publishing a new course is a project and the project name is the name of the course. And once that's done, it goes into the areas courses. And what that means is because now there's a standard to be maintained, I will look at that course over time and see if it needs updated. Maybe I need to reshoot the videos or add more information. If I don't intend to do anything with the course later on, then it just simply goes to the archive. Now, because of the difference of having a deadline and having a standard to be maintained, projects and areas require two very different ways of working. Projects require laser focus, deep work on a kind of a sprint mode, whereas areas require balance and mindfulness as you approach those tasks. Again, imagine if I tried to record so many videos in such a short amount of time, probably I would burn out. What I want to do is every week do three, maybe four videos so that I know there's always a little bit of a backlog when it comes to publishing videos. But if I do that in a project, again, let's go to the example of a course, that course is gonna take me a long time to record. And now what I want is just spend maybe a week, maybe three days, fully focused, ignoring everything and just making sure that the course is recorded because it's the same topic, it's much easier to do that. Okay, with that difference out of the way, let me go into the computer here and show you what that means, why the Paris system is so important as a creator in my files and in my workflow. Let's go. Okay, let's start by opening the files here, right? So I go to Finder and then I go to My Documents and you'll see that here is Projects, Areas, Resources and Archive. So if I go into Project, I'll see that I have a course that I've been recording, Zadokasten in Rome. Then if I go into Areas, I have this YouTube channel. 
and then resources, things for my blog, my brain OS. And then on resources, I have things from other courses. And then on the archive, I finally have anything that I don't really use anymore, but I might need in the future. Now, the great thing about the PARA system is that you can use it in all the folders that you use in a computer. That means Notion, that means your folder, that means your Google Drive, anything that you use. It's literally one system to rule them all. And that makes finding files so much easier because you're using the same taxonomy on all your apps. Amazing. So yeah, that's my folder structure. But for example, if I open Notion here, you'll see that I also have a Paris system here. So I have goals and tasks, and then I have projects, areas, resources, and archive. Again, Paris system. So for example, here on the projects page, I'm listing all the projects that I want to complete in quarter two. Then if you click the drop down here on areas, you'll find so many things in the areas of activity. So for example, this one is the YouTube content calendar. And you'll see it's a Kanban board with all the videos that I'm shooting and all the videos that are published and so on. There's also other things, for example, convert kit, which is my list on all the things that I'm doing to manage my email list. If you want to join that inner circle and become a subscriber, there's a link in the description. And then there's the content calendar for the articles, for the book summaries, for the social media clips. You might have seen some of those on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. And then the content calendar for LinkedIn and then courses and products. Then if we go into the resources here, we have the ideal customer, ideas, playbooks that I use with my team to show how things are done, notes for meetings, the swipe file, which is basically taking ideas all over the web that I can use for my projects. And then courses that I took and finally things that I need to learn, a couple of articles that I like to cite. And then finally, anything that doesn't fall into this goes into the archive here. So for example, you could also replicate this system if you're using Evernote. In my personal realm, I I also use the same system. So yeah, if I'm trying to find something from YouTube on any app that I want to use, I know that that file is going to be within the folder areas. And if I'm trying to find a folder related to a course that I'm producing right now, which is a project, I know that that file or that information will be inside the folder projects. Now it might sound like a really simple switch, but because you're replicating this all over your apps, you really don't have to think anymore because you already know the buckets that you are using. You can replicate it in your email, in your to-do manager, Evernote, Notion, Roam, all the apps that you use. Now, this system is pretty neat already. I could now find all the files that I need in under a minute, but better than a minute, it's finding things in seconds. So let's talk about the app that puts this entire system on steroids. All right, and the name of that app is Alfred. Alfred is basically a better spotlight for Mac. So if you use Spotlight to find your files, basically you can search anything. Think of Alfred as Spotlight on steroids. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Left. Come on! So Alfred does all the standard things, for example, if you want to use the calculator. But the greatest thing about the Paris system and the way that I use Alfred is that you can use Alfred to find files within folders. So for example, let's just go in a general term. We use the backslash here and just say projects. So now you're able to find the number one, which is projects because that's the P of the Paris system. But now if I want to find a specific file within an area, for example, the last video that I recorded, I could do that. And the last video that I recorded was about podcasts. So if I just do that and then podcast, I can see how I take notes from podcasts. And now when I click it, magically, it's gonna open that specific file. So yes, Alfred puts everything on steroids. So all you need to do right now is define your projects, your areas, your resources, and then the archive, anything that doesn't fall into those categories will be filled over time. And you can start by creating those four folders in your computer and then start creating in all the other apps that you use. So over time, just every week, start creating the Paris system in your Gmail, in your Google Drive, Evernote, Notion, Roam, and all the other apps that you use. And then finally, install Alfred and put everything on steroids. And if you wanna find out all the other productivity apps that I use in my MacBook Pro, I have a video exactly about that topic and you can click here to go watch it now. I go over everything that is on my MacBook and all the apps that I use to be more productive. So click here, go watch that video right now, and I'll see you, fellow creator, in the next video. Bye-bye.